Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be once again talking about that tropical cyclone that we've been talking about. And let me tell you, there's some big updates with the chances and probabilities here from the National Hurricane Center. <laughs> For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this one will at maximum become a tropical depression or tropical storm or possibly hurricane? Where do you think this one is headed? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's take a look at this two day graphical tropical weather outlook here from the Pacific Ocean and as you can see that area very far east is at 20% now over the next two days, which I think is lower than it was yesterday. I know this is for sure lower than it was yesterday, the five day graphical tropical weather outlook here, 20% chance as well. So where is the increase in probability? Well, this is where we have to look at the Atlantic because now we have a 10% chance here in the two day graphical tropical weather outlook. That doesn't seem like a huge increase, does it? It's like a 10% increase because we had zero and now we have 10. So, I mean, you know, what's the big deal? Well, when we look at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook, we've gone up 20%. We've gone from, I think, 30% all the way up here to 50% over the next five days of tropical development here within the southern Gulf, and that will head generally northward likely. So we're going to be watching this obviously very closely. We have some new updates from the spaghetti model guidance as well. So there's many, many updates here that we have new information on, and I'm very excited to present that to you guys. And obviously it's very important to keep up to date with the latest information on the tropics, especially if you live, I don't know, along the Gulf Coast, anything like that. You're going to certainly want to be uh, paying close attention to this because this could become a problem in a hurry, in my opinion. Now we're taking a look at the probability of tropical depression now. Now we will view this in three day increments, the first one being the 13th through the 16th here. And as you can see for the Southern Gulf, we do have a 70 to 80% chance of tropical depression status there. Ignore the one off the East Coast. It's been calling for a tropical depression off the East Coast for about a week now and it never happens. So I don't know what all that is about, uh, but this model keeps showing that. Now, as we move on to the 16th through the 19th, you can see that we have a 60 to 70% chance as well. It's just a little bit elongated here. And then the six to nine day outlook, it spreads across the whole Gulf Coast and the East Coast. Um, but generally there's a 40 or 50% chance within there. Uh, I, think, I think this might be a little bit of a range thing, I think, because we're looking at a little bit longer out. I think that is the reason why it's calling for some wacky things a little bit here. Uh, that's why I think it's calling for that. Now the probabil probability of tropical storm here, and this is when it peaks, so I picked the maximum one here, this is the 18th through the 21st, we do get a 30 to 40% chance of tropical storm status here. And the important thing here is the location, obviously that is pretty close to Texas and Louisiana, and it's within the five to eight day range, which isn't too long out, it's pretty long, but not insanely long. So that is reasonable range to be talking about certain things. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the, the satellite imagery and also the spaghetti model guidance as well. Alright, now here is the satellite imagery and as you can see this one does have some nice organization to it. It's not a bunch of tall clouds all over the place. They are kind of close together I would say. Uh, which is kind of like step one for being organized as a tropical system. When everything's kind of pulled in together, that's kind of a sign that things are a little bit underway, further underway than if they were just scattered about. Like we saw with the one in the Eastern Pacific, obviously, uh, that one was very scattered about. We saw multiple different tall clouds all over the place, spread apart very widely. Uh, and that one, you know, that was going to take days to get back on track. But this one is kind of beginning things at a very good place for development, which is going to make it a little bit more interesting, to say the least. Now, as we move on to the spaghetti model guidance, we're going to start out with our GEFS model, which is our GFS ensemble model here. Uh, and this one has this one basically heading sharply northward, basically just directly north. But none of these members really have it doing much of anything except for one. One has it hitting Louisiana, one singular member there. We do have two that take it back to the Pacific, which is quite interesting as well. Uh, but generally, I would say most of these have it kind of just dying out. Same thing with the Canadian ensemble model. It's very quick. It just has these very short tracks, and, and that's about it. That's all it has to show here. Uh, not a lot going on at all. It's once we take a look at all the individual models alone, this is when things get really interesting because we have multiple taking it back south, I would say about five or six, and then we have like four taking it directly westward back over Mexico. We have one taking it kind of northwestward, and then we have two that are identical, so it's basically one. 
that is taking it northward towards Louisiana. This is the most spread out spaghetti model guidance I've ever seen in my entire life, probably. It looks like an octopus, basically, because it has legs going out in every single direction. Uh, very, very weird to see it this spread out, and the confidence is rather low, I would say, for considering how close we are to this happening. Uh, the spaghetti model guidance is not giving me any sort of uh, reassurance by any means about anything uh, at this point. So we're going to watch this closely. I do expect that over the coming one to two days, we will get a lot better of a look from the spaghetti models. And that's going to be, you know, a good a good thing because we can really just determine uh, where which direction this one's going in. That's basically step number one right now. Uh, we need to figure out where this one is going, the, the direction at least. Now here's the intensity guidance. And this is, like I said, like the spaghetti models, but just for intensity. And as you can see, uh, there's quite a few of these that take this very close to tropical storm status, but never do it. And then there's about four that take it to tropical storm status. The interesting thing, this is an observation, is every single model here that takes it to tropical storm status also takes it to hurricane status. So this is just something we're going to watch. I don't know which direction these models specifically take this one in. Uh, but I'm guessing north, and that's going to be interesting if that is to occur anything like that, although I do expect that to be uh, pretty unlikely, but we will wait and see what happens with that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're actually going to take a look at the European model and the GFS model's vorticity so we can see exactly what they think this one's going to do. All right, now here we are taking a look at the European's vorticity, and as you can see, uh, we see this one has some energy there in the middle of the Gulf. This is going to be by about Wednesday evening. Uh, and then by time of reaching about Friday morning, you can see this one is drawing closer to Louisiana and, uh, and the rest of the Gulf Coast for the most part. But this one does have a stronger storm than it has in previous days. I mean, this is actually looking like a quite intense system potentially. And then by the time we're reaching about Sunday morning at about 2 a.m., look at that. A very strong tropical cyclone is reaching Louisiana uh, actually in a very violent fashion. This is not good news. Uh, and this is only just a few days out, seven days out. So this is very interesting. Uh, much stronger storm than it has been showing over the previous couple of days, like I mentioned. So I'm concerned about this. Uh, and I'm going to continue to track this with you guys, obviously. So I'm hoping it's going to fizzle out like a lot of those spaghetti models showed. But there is a good amount that also show it heading northward towards the Gulf Coast. And that's especially what I'm going to be watching for of the possibility of over the coming days as we just continue to update you guys on this topic. As long as there's a tropical threat like this, I don't know what else I would make a video about because nothing is really going to come close to being as potentially impactful as this. Let's just take a look at what the GFS has to say. And as you can see, this is by about Thursday evening at about 8 p.m. or so. And we can see there is energy in the southern Gulf. It just isn't organized yet. By the time we're reaching about Saturday at approximately 3 p.m. or so, uh, we can see there is a system there located offshore of Texas that is looking pretty intense, probably a upper end tropical depression or lower end tropical storm from our GFS model here. Very intense system, uh, but it's by time we're reaching Monday morning, June 21st, that things get a really concerning as it has an even stronger system than the European model had hitting a very similar location. This would be a very strong tropical storm. Maybe even a hurricane here from the GFS model hitting Louisiana. Uh, so this is very odd considering the spaghetti models and the intensity guidance isn't as confident as these deterministic models. The GFS and the, or sorry, the European model seem to be much more confident in this. So we're going to watch and see. This is a very interesting setup we have here. Uh, and I'm going to continue to update you guys like I've been saying. For our confidence tab, we're remaining at a 4 out of 6. So my confidence is not very high, especially in the later things there. Uh, so we're at about a 50% chance or so of everything we've said here. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we will have another tropical system soon? When do you think it'll be? And Chris Coleman said, yes, I love them videos about the weather. I think that the next one will be in a few weeks. So basically maybe before July. So we will wait and see and see if Chris Coleman is right. But good comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dopey Nagel, Larry Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, 
and then Steven Krenenthal as well. I would also like to thank our channel members, Weathershot Dogs, Hair From One, and Catbite as well. The Patreon page can be found in the pinned comment and the description down below, and then that exciting uh, channel membership can be found next to that subscribe button as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button to help that YouTube algorithm out. Also, leaving a comment down below does the same thing. And then be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.